Hello everyone, welcome to a new session on informatics and introduction to bioinformatics, information technology and society part 2, digital divide. The concept of digital divide. Information and communication technologies have become the backbone of the global information economy and given rise to the information society, more attention has been focused on the gap in access to ICTs between developed and developing countries. The digital divide is a social issue referring to the differing amount of information between those who have access to the internet and those who do not have access. The term became popular among concerned parties in the late 1990s. It is a growing gap between the underprivileged members of the society. Broadly speaking, the difference is not necessarily determined by the access to the internet, but by access to ICT or information and communications technologies and to media that the different segments of society can use. With regards to the internet, the access is only one aspect. Other factors such as the quality of connection and related services should be considered. Today, the most discussed issue is the availability of the access at an affordable cost and quality. Digital divide is a gap between people with effective access to digital and information technology and those with very limited or no access at all. It includes the imbalances in physical access to technology and imbalances in resources and skills needed to effectively participate as digital citizen. The concept of digital divide has been changing over time. Thus, the concept of the digital divide basically incorporates the following focuses. Subjects of connectivity, individuals, organizations, enterprises, schools, hospitals, countries, etc. Characteristics of connectivity. Internet connectivity can be utilized at a variety of locations such as homes, offices, schools, libraries, public spaces, internet cafe and others. There are also varying levels of connectivity in rural, suburban and urban areas. Demographic and socio-economic variables such as income, education, age, geographic location, etc. Means of connectivity. The infrastructure by which individuals, households, businesses and communities connect to the internet address, the physical mediums that people use to connect to the internet such as desktop computers, laptops, cell phones, iPods or other MP3 players, Xboxes or Playstations, electronic book readers and tablets such as iPads. Intensity of Connectivity the usage is for mere access, retrieval, interactivity, innovative, contributions, etc. Purposes of connectivity. Online activities like e-government, e-business, e-learning, e-health, e-employment, e-security, e-environment, e-agriculture, etc. Infrastructure. Availability of infrastructure. Capacity building. Skills and capacity to use the technology is more important. Resource usage, a new way of education to take advantage of the new opportunities. Obtaining access to ICTs and using them actively has been linked to a plethora of demographic and socio-economic characteristics like income, education, race, gender and geographic location, age, skills, awareness political and cultural and psychological attitudes. Widening levels of education seem to magnify the digital divide. Households with higher levels of education are increasingly more likely to use computers and the internet. Telecommunication facilities are more readily available for wealthier communities and are more attractive for developing companies to establish themselves. As a result, Poverty in less fortunate neighborhoods make it less appealing for investments by outside companies, further aggravating the divide. At the same time, 
the digital divide continues to widen along very specific racial lines. In the African American community, it was observed that they had negative encounters with technological innovations. Asian Americans, on the other hand, generally emphasize education, resulting in a larger number embracing rising technological advances. Those with computers and access to the internet are becoming even richer through the power of information while those without them are becoming even poorer in comparison. People with access to computers and internet can easily obtain the latest developments in the field of science and technology, whereas the poor sections in society that cannot afford computers are left behind. In United States, teachers are using the internet to communicate with parents, websites with homework postings that allow parents to keep tabs on assignments and even parent-teacher conferences are becoming popular. United States is considered as the most wired country with least discrepancy in digital divide. Information and communication technologies help country to modernize their production systems and increase their competitiveness faster than in the past. The most critical example is that of the Asian Pacific economies and particularly the cases of Hong Kong, Taiwan, Singapore, Malaysia and South Korea. The ability to move into the information age depends on the capacity of the whole society to be educated and to be able to assimilate and process complex information. This starts with the education system from the bottom up, from the primary school to the university. And it relates as well to the overall process of cultural development including the level of functional literacy, the content of the media and the diffusion of information within the population as a whole. In this regard, what is happening is that regions and firms that concentrate the most advanced production and management systems are increasingly attracting talent from around the world while leaving aside a significant fraction of their own population whose educational level and cultural or technical skills do not fit the requirements of the new production system. A case in point is Silicon Valley, the most advanced information technology producing region in the world which can only maintain the pace of innovation by recruiting every year thousands of engineers and scientists from India, China, Taiwan, Singapore, Korea, Israel, Russia and Western Europe to jobs that cannot be filled by Americans because they do not have proper skills. Similarly, in Bangalore, Mumbai, Seoul or Campinas, engineers and scientists concentrate in high technology hubs connected to the Silicon Valleys of the world, while a large share of the population in all countries remains in low-end, low-skill jobs when they are lucky enough to be employed at all. Thus, there is little chance for a country or region to develop in the new economy without its incorporation into the technological system of the information age. Types of Digital Divide Three distinctive divides described by Hanneman and Rudin in 2007. A geographical digital divide between regions and countries, a social digital divide between social classes, an upgraded digital divide between technology and humans. The three major divides explained by Norris in 2001 by Mark in 2003 and Branco in 2005 are a global divide between the developed and undeveloped worlds, a social divide between the information rich and the information poor, a democratic divide between those who do and those who do not use the new technologies to further political participation. The steps to be taken to bridge divide and increasing the bandwidth of broadband and taking broadband connectivity to the rural areas, providing computers for cheaper rate, making Linux-based open source software widely available so that the computing devices cost less and more affordable. India is taking active steps to reduce digital divide in rural areas like villages. ICT infrastructure is the backbone of modern society of India. It is the biggest enabler of change and process reforms 
with minimum resistance. The information and communication technologies are being increasingly used by the governments to deliver its services at the locations convenient to the citizens. Further, it brings effectiveness, efficiency and transparency in the system. Therefore, the governments around the world are busy in developing the ICT's infrastructure. India is one of the countries where telecommunication development activities have gained momentum in the past decade or so. Efforts have been made from both governmental and non-governmental platforms to enhance the telecommunication infrastructure. India's digital divide problem can be more understood by studying it under three subsections. Tele-density divide, mobile phone divide, internet divide. Tele-density divide is low throughout the countries of the South Asia. Pakistan has highest tele-density in Asia and Bangladesh has lowest. India is by far the largest South Asian country in terms of population, economy and telecommunication network. However, there are huge disparities extent within the country and this is evidenced in the uneven distribution of telecommunication access. Mobile divide. Far from being a lifestyle product, mobiles have now become a necessity. India has seen a huge spur in mobiles in the past five years and it has penetrated even to the rural areas of India to a good extent. With entrance of CDMA, that is Code Division Multiple Access, like Reliance, Communications and Tata Indicom, the call rates have been reduced and usability has been increased. The total number of mobile connections in the country, including multi-SIM and inactive connections, dropped to 867.02 million in April 2012, but the active mobile connection base increased to 724.48 million mobile connections in India, around 83.56% of total are active. Internet divide. Internet came to India in the early 1990. Videsh Sanchar Nigam Limited or VSNL introduced internet in India via dial-up in the six cities on August 14, 1995. At that time, there was limited internet access only in a few major cities, all in the hands of the government. VSNL, the agency responsible for internet activities and the DOT, that is Department of Telecommunications provided an agonizingly erratic connectivity with miserly bandwidth and far too few phone lines. Connection rates ran as low as 5% and users were frequently cut off. India's broadband connection rate increased by 0.29% to 15.09 million at the end of April 2013, according to the Indian Telecom Regulator TRAI. TRAI reported that country has more than 10 million broadband subscribers and these numbers will change into 100 million by 2014. And the market of PC in India has grown at the rate of 27% in the past year and of notebook computers has grown with a rate of 52%, which is surprisingly a huge ratio as compared to the other countries. The internet began as an experiment funded by the United States Department of Defense to promote networking research called the ARPANET in 1969. It originally connected the Stanford Research Institute, UCLA, UC Santa Barbara, and the University of Utah. Out of the world's population of nearly 7 billion, only 32 percent, that is 2.3 billion, are internet users today. In Africa, internet penetration is even lower. Out of the 1 billion Africans, only 13 percent, that is 1.4 million, use the internet. This is what's called the digital divide, where poorer regions are less likely to have access to ICTs. In European Union, 70% of the individual used the internet in 2012 on a regular basis and 45% of individuals made online purchases. Overcoming digital divide. Factors help to overcome the digital divide. Universal access. 
an individual must be able to connect in order to achieve enhancement of social and cultural capital as well as achieve mass economic gains in productivity. In the public sector, policy makers and community members must recognize the importance of such resources and take measures to ensure access for all. The global average of ICT spending is at a mere 3% of income. Potential solutions include driving down the costs of ICT, which includes low-cost technologies and shared access through telecenters. More Community Access Centers or CACs. CACs are a critical resource for those without access to computers and the internet at school or work groups to find jobs or for educational purposes. Well-trained technical staff. Lack of adequate in infrastructure and lack of knowledge are two major obstacles that impede mass connectivity. This leads to a focus on capabilities and skills as well as awareness to move from mere access to effective usage of ICT. Communities and schools must train and preserve additional and more qualified staff alongside new technologies to promote the best application of resources. Change of public attitude regarding technology. The public must come to realize the incredible power of new technologies and embrace them as tools for their future and the future of their children. The United Nations is aiming to raise awareness of the divide by way of the World Information Society Day, which has taken place yearly since May 17, 2001. Social media websites serve as both manifestations of and means by which to combat the digital divide. The former describes phenomena such as the divided users, demographics that make up sites such as Facebook and MySpace or WordPress and Tumblr. Black communities are using the internet, especially websites like Tumblr and Twitter, to narrow the gap of the digital divide. Each of these sites hosts thriving communities that engage with otherwise marginalized populations. Current programs to overcome digital divide. In the digital society, some core concepts, tools and competences have developed. A citizen of the digital society needs to master these concepts, tools and competences and must be aware of their stakes and consequences. The government, non-profit groups and private foundations have started programs aimed at narrowing the digital divide. Government or non-profit group programs. E-rate program. The schools and libraries division or SLD of the Universal Service Administrative Company USAC enables schools, libraries and rural healthcare providers with network wiring and access to both telecommunications and internet services to those eligible at rates discounted from 20 to 90 percent. The highest priority and discounts are given to the most economically or geographically disadvantaged schools and libraries based on the household incomes of students' families. The Community Technology Centers program sponsored by the U.S. Department of Education promotes the development of programs aimed at increasing and demonstrating the value of technology in urban and rural areas and economically distressed communities. Private or Corporate Microsoft Microsoft will donate an estimated $200 million in software to create access to technology at public libraries that serve low-income communities. The Intel Computer Clubhouse served youth to acquire the tools, problem-solving skills and confidence for successful lives. Nonprofit Power Up Comprised of more than a dozen nonprofit organizations joined together to launch programs which help to access technology. Successful models for bridging digital divide. The digital divide has many dimensions and can be categorized as global, regional and national. At national level, there is no single divide but multiple divides, for instance, within countries between men and women, young and elderly, rich and poor and most importantly, rural and urban. 
the divide can be bridged by providing connectivity provision, content creation, capacity augmentation, core technologies creation and exploitation, cost reduction, competence building, community participation and commitment to the deprived and disadvantaged. Tortas, Peru and e-commerce portal for homemade cakes made by Peru women giving them supplementary incomes. Farmnet in Uganda, information on markets, improved agricultural technologies and weather condition for farmers. Infodes, Kajamarka, Peru, increasing the production levels of small farmers and the management skills of local governments through the provision of information and communication tools. Pondicherry, India. To enable rural families to access modern information and communication technologies in order to train and educate youth and women. Koth Malay Internet Project. Koth Malay Sri Lanka uses community radio as an interface between the community and the internet. Gyandut Project. Dar, Madhya Pradesh, India. A unique form of government to citizen G2C e-commerce activity. Akash Ganga, India offers the dairy information services kiosk which offers a multitude of animal husbandry related services besides maintaining databases and offering internet connectivity to the dairy cooperative society. Bridging the digital divide efforts from Kerala, Akshaya.net. It is a project implemented by the IT department, Government of Kerala, with private sector participation to generate and distribute locally relevant content to improve public delivery of services and to catalyze all sectors of information technology industry in the state. Friends, a single one-stop standalone service center powered by 20 high-speed computers. Friends delivers easy and efficient services through a single point interface. It promotes improved coordination between government departments and simplifies interaction between the citizen and the department. Keltron Information Kiosks or KIKs. KIKs are value-added cyber cafes providing various services related to government through internet and LAN and catering to everyday needs of the masses. The KIK's envisage an e-governance grid by networking of government departments, institutions and other agencies involved in governance. The other programs run by KIK's e-education, income certificate, domicile certificate, caste certificate, local email, employment news. The information kiosks model apart from bridging the digital divide also address various social issues like unemployment of youth, empowerment of women through greater participation in decision making, bringing in attitudinal change in street children, structure networks for e-care and e-support, especially for patients of diseases like AIDS, etc. Gift of information technology to the society. Development in mobile computing and communication led to the proliferation of mobile phones, tablet computers, smartphones and netbooks. Netbooks and entry-level tablet computers are often priced lower as compared to notebooks or laptops and desktop computer since the target market for these products are those living in the emerging markets. This made the internet and computing more accessible to people especially in emerging markets and developing countries where most of the world's poor reside. These products are equipped with basic mobile communication hardware like Wi-Fi and 2.5G or 3G internet USB sticks. These allowed users to connect to the internet via mobile and wireless networks without having to secure a landline or an expensive broadband connection via DSL, cable internet or fiber optics. According to International Telecommunication Union, mobile communications and technology has emerged as the primary technology that will bridge in 
the least developed countries. Multinational computer manufacturers like Acer and Lenovo are focusing in bringing cheaper notebooks to emerging markets like China, Indonesia and India. Mobile learning or M-learning is provided by Molnet. It is the exploitation of ubiquitous handheld technologies together with wireless and mobile phone networks to facilitate, support, enhance and extend the reach of teaching and learning. Mobile learning is adapted in classes since aside from the fact that it helps in the enhancement of students learning, it also helps teachers to easily keep track of the students progress. Communication when needed is possible at any given time. The most commonly expected advantages from adopting mobile technology in education include the potential to be engaging for students, to enable interactive learning and to support personalization of instruction to meet the needs of different students. With the advent of the IPv6 protocol, the explosion of mobile web access and increasing speed of nanotechnologies, the internet is at a major crossroads. The era of hyperconnectivity and mega volumes of data has arrived. Tomorrow's digital world will rely on three key pillars networks, interfaces, and information processing capacity. Ultra high speed broadband, which enables people to access services, is the first thing that comes to mind. By 2020, communication traffic is expected to be between 300 and 1000 times higher than it is today and the development of the LTE or long-term evolution 4G mobile infrastructures seems inevitable. Computing power plants are designed for mega volumes of data and real-time optimization and will depend on the sort of advanced technologies currently reserved for high-performance computing or HPC. Cloud computing Highly centralized and widely available computing on demand is known as cloud computing. Nanotechnologies Extreme miniaturization of embedded systems will instill objects with the form of intelligence and link them into networks to multiply their functionality. Extreme computing Processing enormous amounts of data in real time will require huge computing capacity Leading edge technologies currently being developed for computer simulation such as Bull X will be at the heart of tomorrow's vast computing power plants. Open source. Open source software or Linux will remain a key driver for digital innovation thanks to its flexibility, robustness, low cost and above all guarantees of interoperability. Let us now summarize what we have studied in this session. The digital divide is defined as the discrepancy between those individuals and communities that have and do not have access to the information technologies that are transforming our lives. Three distinctive divides are described like a geographical, social and upgraded digital divide. India's digital divide problem can be more understood by studying teledensity, mobile phone and internet divide. The government, non-profit groups and private foundations have started programs aimed at narrowing the digital divide. Here are some questions for you to work out. Implications of digital divide. Discuss how the successful models help to reduce digital divide. Discuss the challenges facing a digital society. Discuss how information technology is a gift to the society. What are the different programs run by the KIKs? Here are some books and articles for your reference. The Digital Divide, Civic Engagement, Information Poverty and the Internet Worldwide by Norris, 2001, Cambridge University Press. Excellent Technology and Social Inclusion Rethinking the Digital Divide by Mark Warshaw, 2003, MIT Press, Cambridge. Bridging the Digital Divide in India, Challenges and Opportunities by Nina Singh, 2007, World Libraries, 
volume 17 number 1. Here are some websites for your further studies www.ed slash gov slash technology www.pbs.org slash digital divide www.digitaldivide.org Thank you for watching this session. See you next time. Until then, bye.